Hello everybody and welcome back to Juno where we are currently kind of spoiled for new contracts. We have a lot of options here. So Heliosynchronous Orbit we have accepted and I think we should go ahead and do this one. So we need to get an inclination of 100 degrees plus or minus 2. Okay. That is noted. An apoapsis of 1,000 and a periapsis of 1,000. So that is all okay. I think we should hop into here and we should heavy lift a vehicle. Wait, did we actually need a payload in that? I'm not convinced we did. What payload would it have been? No payload. Okay, beautiful. So we're going to hop directly in here and we are going to load up our craft. This is going to be... I think new. Yes. So we're going to be basing it off of this design. And what we want to do here is I want to make this essentially a heavy lift vehicle. So we are going to grab an interstage here. This will be a side interstage. And we're just going to slot this in right about here-ish, I think. And then we're going to put in a fuel tank right over here. And I'd like to stretch this fuel tank to be about like that or so slop in a i don't know why i said slop slot in a nose cone and i'm wondering about the size of this fuel tank it might want to be a little bit smaller in width to be a bit more like that perhaps and then this is going to be srbs as well we're just going to use this to propel us up a bunch more in theory so this is going to be goblin solid rocket motors we can put one in there but of course we're going to do a whole lot more than that we're going to put an additional one there and we're going to symmetry this in radial mode and it'll be something like that in theory so that will help us lift, and at this point, this needs to be attached in like that. Okay, and then we can grab... Well, we could grab this and move it up, but I think this is fine. Maybe we just move this guy up like that. Okay, so something like this. I don't know if we need struts or anything like that to help hold this together. I don't know how wobbly the rockets in this game get. For now, let's just put this into radial X2. And we can even bump this up to X4 later on if we feel like we need additional. So that looks absolutely fine. So if we look at our staging analysis, the starting thrust to weight is 0.99. That's a little on the low side. So we should probably bump up our number of engines in this solid rocket motor here. Um... Interesting. Okay. That's very interesting. So, apparently, this changes it around with the symmetry. Noted. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab this guy, go into symmetry mode, and it's inheriting symmetry from a part it's connected to. Okay. So we need to select root, and that would be this. I see. So we need to disable that symmetry. And then we need to do symmetry here, like so. I'd like to move it out a bit, like that. And then duplicate it and put it here. 6x symmetry there. Let's change the positioning to be like that and then duplicate that as well. Uh, have it be about there. Duplicate that, put it here, and 6x symmetry like that. So that is going to be a lot. And then I want to grab this guy and I want to mirror that. Actually, radial x2 like that. And then we can also make it be 4x if we really wanted to. So this is much, much higher thrust to weight. It's probably less burn time, but that is reasonably fine. So all we need to do now is, can we put this on the village, the village pad? We might be able to. Oh, it has payloads. We need to get rid of the payloads. Right. Okay, so this is going to definitely have a lot more power to it. No doubt about that. So let's put this on here. Let's go ahead and save the craft. There we go. Yes, go ahead and overwrite that. 
That seems fine. And now we're going to put this out on the village pad. That's going to cost 5k to do the launch fee. We would prefer not to put it on the alley pad if we can help it because it's way more expensive there. And yeah, this can go on the village pad. No problem. Beautiful. So let's put this out here and we are going to be... Okay, so we can see that this is our current inclination at 25.6. So 90 degrees is 25.6. So that means that we need to have a heading of something. <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly what. So it should end up being like 65 degrees in one direction or another. And I'm not sure which is which. Unless it automatically compensates and we should just be setting our heading to 100 degrees which is a potential possibility. So let's set this to about 60 degrees here and our heading to 100. And let's see what happens with this. Okay, so first things first, our center stage is not actually staged. That's noted. Our inclination here is still 25.63, okay. It's going up, so that is fine. I guess we'll just let these boost us up like this, but this is not the way, wow, that was explosive. This is not the way that this was intended to run, necessarily. So that is noted for sure. Those were intended to run simultaneously and just absolutely catapult us up. But we can change the staging after this run. This is mostly just trying to figure out how exactly the inclination system in this game works. And we're definitely gaining inclination here. But I'm not sure that we're gaining it as much as we'd like. So let's try setting our heading to 120 degrees. And just continue to push through this. Okay, so our current apoapsis is up in space. That's absolutely fine. And we're just going to keep burning with our heading set to prograde. But I want our, actually our pitch set to prograde, but I want our heading to be out over here. Okay, so this SRB is burnt out at this point. And that's definitely going to be a fair amount higher. Our altitude at ground level is reasonable. I want to check in on our orbital heading. Okay, that looks good. And we definitely want to boost up this inclination. No doubt about that. I'm going to bring us out over here. Because we need a lot more inclination. So that is all looking reasonably fine. We can see that this is coming up. It's currently at almost 30 degrees. So we're going to continue to burn over this direction. And we're continuing to get altitude as well. We're targeting a thousand kilometer apoapsis, but the main thing that I want to get at this point is that inclination. So that looks fine-ish for now. It definitely needs to continue to come up. It's at 32 degrees right now. We are almost a third of the way to the correct inclination. We can make changes on the way, but launching into the correct inclination is the most efficient way to do it. Obviously, that's not what we're doing here. So I need to figure out what the relationship is between the heading and the inclination degree. I had hoped that it would be a little simpler and that the heading that we set is the inclination that we get, but that is not the way that it works. That's very clear. So that is fine. I think that we should probably consider bringing this all the way over to 180 degree heading because we need to head quite a lot more south. So that's 40 degrees, and it's definitely coming up a lot faster. So we're currently 90 degrees off of our, of our like, default 90 degree heading, and that's certainly noted. I'm wondering if it would come up faster if we took this all the way over to 225 degrees. And at this point, I'd like to set our pitch down to, like, 10-ish degrees. Okay, so something like that. So now we're at 50. 
That's definitely going up. No doubt about that. But I am concerned about this. This is a very inefficient launch. No doubt about it. So out of curiosity, what is our inclination going to be if we were to revert this back and just launch on a 90 degree heading? Would our inclination end up being 90 degrees? I don't think so, because we're not launching from an equatorial position. So that is definitely noted. We're at 70 degrees right now. Let's continue to burn here for the moment. This is now 75. We might need more up in this heading here, but launching to the correct heading would be the way to go for sure. So this is currently an 82 degree inclination. Let's get this up the other 15 degrees. But we're going to be out of fuel pretty quickly. We have built up our speed okay, but it's not great. We've spent a lot of time working on this inclination. So it's now 92 degrees. 93. 94. 95. 96. 97. 98, 99, and okay. I cut our throttle here because we're at 100.11. And now we need to raise up our apoapsis to 1,000 kilometers. I'm not convinced we have the delta V at this point to raise our periapsis. So that is definitely noted. Okay, so something like that. We've got 2% fuel left. Yeah, I'm like 99% sure that that's not going to be a thing. So 100 degree inclination is basically a polar orbit. Noted. We can definitely get a lot more efficient of a launch here. So a planned burn at apoapsis would mean that we would need how much DV to get this done? It would need a fair amount of DV for sure. So something like this in theory. It's very hard to get that last kilometer dialed in. Okay, this is good enough. So how much DV is this going to be? This is going to be 700 DV. And how much DV do we actually have? The next burn is 702. And our delta V remaining is, where is it in here? It's definitely in here, 246. Okay, so we should revert that back. And it's very clear that we need to launch into a different heading than we did there. I launched to equatorial. So what we need to do is we need to have our heading be going much more southerly. So like 180 degrees for right now. And if we were to bring this around to 60 degrees, that seems okay. Now our staging is still going to be broken, but I want to see how much better this goes. So we're just launching into a 180 degree heading and that should get us a lot more inclination, a lot more quickly. We should have to burn a lot less fuel on changing our inclination, which is a very inefficient burn, to be clear. So three, two, one, and mark. Man, that's explosive. That's noted that those inner stages are not messing around. Okay, so we've got about a 53 degree inclination right now. Now we've got about a 65 degree inclination. And these SRBs are going to propel us most of the way there, I think. So once we get our inclination correct, we're not going to want to change the inclination all that much, right? So I think that means that we're gonna to have to change our heading back or just lock to prograde. But I still don't fully understand the relationship between our inclination and our heading here. It's 
awkward. But it's because of our launch location, I think. So, we're just about done with our SRB stage here, and you can see just how much more efficient this launch was. So, let's bring ourselves on up here, and I want to be right on this uh, inclination heading here. So, I want to be right on prograde, and we are bringing this inclination up a little bit still, and I think that's fine. For the time being, let's just lock velocity to prograde. And we're just going to park here for a little bit. We need to push our apoapsis up, and in the meantime, that inclination needs to continue to increase. Now, if we want to stop it increasing, we're going to have to change our heading back this way. A little bit. The question is, how much? I don't think it's going to be too much. We still need another 15 degrees out of this, so for the moment, I'm fairly content in just parking where we're at right now. This is so much more efficient of a launch trajectory now that I understand a little bit more what's going on with our inclination. So that is looking very, very good. We should have more than enough fuel to do what we're doing here. What is our time to apoapsis? 2.5 minutes. Okay, looks good. That inclination is not going up very fast, and that's understood. We wouldn't really expect it to. In fact, honestly, with us locked to prograde like this, I wouldn't expect that inclination to be changing all that much at all, except that we are not currently in orbit. So this is okay. I'm not too concerned about it. Let's push that apoapsis out. We launched into very nearly a good inclination here, and a small inclination change is not going to be a significant thing. So this is looking absolutely fine right now. But yeah, at this point, this would be a 12-degree inclination change, and that is going to go down a fair amount more as well. So this looks good. Let's push that apoapsis up. The main thing that I'm concerned about right now is the apoapsis. So let's just get that surface velocity brought right on up, and this looks fine. We'll probably have to do a bit of an inclination change soon enough, but that's okay. We can definitely do that. Cool. So the apoapsis is starting to increase. It's starting to go up exponentially. We're definitely feeling it going up faster and faster here. We just need to target that at that 1,000 kilometer level. We're currently about halfway there. As of now, we are. And that inclination is going to need to be changed a little bit, but this is a much, much better heading for us to be on. Okay, 700 kilometers, 800 kilometers, 900 kilometers, and let's get that up a little further. 6, 7, 8, 9, 1,000 kilometers. Beautiful. So now we're going to come around to our apoapsis here, planned burn at apoapsis, and our goal, of course, is to simply circularize this. Now, we're still not in the correct inclination, and we're going to have to do an inclination change. That is absolutely understood. This is very sensitive here. There must be a way to reduce the sensitivity of it. There is, but I'm bad at it. Okay, that's going to take some practice. This is close enough. So we're going to call that good. That's going to be a 629 meter per second burn there. And we, of course, currently have in our delta V here, we have 1.65 kilometers per second. So that looks good. Let's align to that planned burn. And our inclination is off, but that's fine. And at this point, what we need to do is we need to execute the burn and warp to the node. Beautiful. So the burn will auto-execute here. And there it goes. So that looks wonderful, pushing our periapsis right on out. Excellent. Now we're going to have to do a small inclination change. And I'm not sure what this X is here. Is this to get rid of the maneuver node? Maybe? Maybe. 
the maneuver node automatically deleted itself. Okay, so we want to go to the descending or ascending node. Either would be fine. Looks like the more recent or the sooner one would be the ascending node, and that looks good. So now we're going to need to go into here, and we're going to need to change our inclination. I'm not sure if we need to go normal or anti-normal. We'll find out this way. Okay. So that looks fine. We're going to need to bring that around over here. That's going to need to be a fairly hefty burn. And then we're going to have to toss in some retrograde as well, which is absolutely understandable. Okay, so this is 98.97. This is 99.48 here. Let's back off a little bit on the retrograde. Okay. Sure. Sure. So 100 degrees would be right about there. And I'm going to call this close enough on the apoapsis and periapsis. We could dial that in, but I'm not going to do that for right now. So this is going to be a 467 meter per second burn. Do we have 467 meters per second left? We do. We have over a kilometer. So that looks good. We're going to auto ex execute this burn and let's warp on forward. We'll arrive in just five seconds and that will put us in our correct inclination. It would have been more efficient if we had just launched directly into the correct inclination and I could have done that by more compensating in our heading. But I'm still learning exactly how the inclination in, in this game's control scheme works. But there we go. That is fantastic. We'll recover that and actually destroy the craft, and that'll be great. So that is done. We've got this Luna flyby mission, but we've also got a bunch of these other missions. Go higher than 10 kilometers. Oh, this is super easy. This is something that we already did. I'm wondering how many of, how many of these are maybe automatically generated and how many are scripted. Because I think there might be a mixture of them. Maybe. I'm not 100% certain, but these are definitely different. 125 kilometers, oof. I mean, we are capable of it because we would just do what we did before. <laughs> and then there's also this village race, which I guess is fine. We could accept both of these. And in theory, we should be able to complete this. So I'm going to load up our car, not our rocket car, just our car. So we're going to load craft. This is going to be car. There we go. And this guy should be capable of getting this done. Let's put this in the village runway. And we're going to need to complete this village race. So we need to get the Juno statue. We can do this in any order. Okay. So we need to just come down here. It is very dark right now. That's noted. So we need to go through all of these checkpoints. And I'm just going in this order. That's probably not the right order, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and break here. And I think we can head over this direction. It's very dark. There is a wall there. Well, that is unfortunate. Okay, we're going to go in reverse order. <laughs> the maintenance hangar is up here, and that's what we're going to get. And then as far as the drive around 125 kilometers thing goes, that's easy enough. But it is time consuming. Okay, so we're going to head over here. I wish it wasn't so dark. We could probably put headlights on this, and that would make things a little bit better. Okay. I just need to be able to see a little bit here. There's a way down over here. It is so dark. Okay. I think we're on it. Yeah, this seems okay. Let's get the upper patio. Okay, that did not go well. Let's just make our way in here. We're struggling with this turn a bit. That's noted. Okay, into the upper patio we go. 
There we go. Next up would be the Dark Back Door, which is living up to its name right now. It is very, very dark indeed. And let's just make our way over this way. We have to do this in under six minutes. Can we make it through over here? Barely. But maybe we shouldn't have. Because now we're here. <laughs> okay. Let's make our way up and over. We're up on this roof right now, which is awkward to be sure. And there we go. I think we maybe can get out of this. It would really help if I could see what we're doing. That would be very, very helpful. We just need to fall down here and hopefully not be on the wrong side. Okay, now we're stuck. Okay. We're EVAing. And we're just going to run it. <laughs> go, Yuri, go. He's actually pretty fast and kind of more steerable, so... Oh, he, uh... He took damage from the speed he was running at. Okay. That's exciting. Well, we need to make our way in here. There we go. I'm not going to do this here, I think. That is going to be... Come on, Yuri. Get turned. That's going to be off camera, and it is going to be... Uh, very tedious. Okay. To the Juno statue. Mission complete. Okay, so we'll recover this craft. There we go. That's just Yuri. And that seems fine. Now, we have an active craft. And we need to then resume this flight. And then we need to recover this. Okay, so we need to end flight, recover craft. There we go. That is perfect. Now, we need to put this out at the alley pad again. And we need to drive around 125 kilometers. Again, this is going to be incredibly tedious. At least we can kind of see what's going on here a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pitch slider and I'm going to add a, a yaw slider. There we go. The pitch slider is going to be maxed and the yaw slider works pretty well at about 30 degrees. But this is not where I want to be doing donuts right now. So we're going to head out over here. And this should be a little bit better, in theory. Hmm. Maybe we should have this be more like 50%. Yeah. This'll do. So what I want to do is I want to move us out over here so that hopefully we're not interacting with that hill. There is a little bit of nonsense in the interaction, no doubt about it. I'm going to bring this turn radius down a little bit, down to 40%. But from here, oh, there's definitely a little bit of a bump there. I don't love that. Let's move this guy up over here for now, and we'll just start doing our circles up over here. Now, because the yaw is always trying to go back to 40, I have to do this awkwardly, but this is fine. Let's start it about here. Okay, that's a tile switch. Well, that's awkward. Regardless, this is how it's going to be done, but where those tile switches happen, it, it's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> We're going to have to figure out where this is going to go. But that's something that I can do off camera. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Xenocyte, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, The Lounge STL, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.